Natalie and Erman are the principals at 2N, a data visualization agency based in New York City. In the studio, they work with a team of passionate design technologists and visual communicators. They work with clients from a range of industries and domains, including nonprofit organizations, financial services, human resources, broadcast news, and the healthcare sector. Notable clients they have worked in the past include the Trevor Project, the Population Council, Bloomberg, and the New York Stock Exchange. Their work has earned them numerous awards, including the gold medal of the 2022 Information is Beautiful Award in the special category for COVID-19 visualizations. Great, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Hanging in there? Um, yes, yeah, so we just want to say, first of all, thank you so much to the DataViz Society for having us. We love being part of the DataViz community, um, and we're honored to speak here today. Um, I'm Natalie, and this is Herman. Hey. Um, so today we're going to talk to you about um, one of our favorite projects that we've ever worked on, um, which was designing the MSNBC Big Board. Um, so are any of you familiar with this product or with Steve Kornacki? <laughs> Some Okay. People. All right. So we'll get into that a little bit more, just I wanted to kind of level set on uh, who has seen this. Um, so the big board has actually received a lot of publicity, um, and it is the election tool that Steve Kornacki and others on MSNBC use to report the um, election data, the election results in the US. So um, Steve has a particular way of storytelling um, that is quite quirky and different and quite unique. Um, and so his ability to tell, to make election data exciting um, and his stamina for staying on air for days on end has deemed him a national treasure in the US. So how do we get here? Um, this is an image of Tim Russett uh, reporting the election results on a whiteboard for the Gore versus Bush 2000 election. So, as you can tell, historically there have not been a lot of interactive tools for on-air reporting um, election results. Dave, this made me laugh. An analyst for MSNBC tried to draw a map of America to help explain the election to his viewers. Uh, but uh, it looks like he drew something else. Take a look at this. Let me see if I can get this here. If work you look at the sheet. states that are going to come, I, I didn't actually work there. Here it's, it, it's good. It's a blank slate. All right. Well, you know what do. I'm going to do? I'm going to draw a map of the United <laughs> right. States here. This is oh, my this crude is... version of a map of the United States. Now, here's the thing. How's this going to happen? All right. So fast forward to 16 years later. And this poor guy, his technology is not working and he's drawing a penis on national television. <laughs> so to say there was room for improvement um, in this space, you can, you can see that there was uh, room for us to do some good work here. Um, so how do we determine if a project or product is successful? So as data visualization practitioners um, and people that are always looking at the user experience and anything that we do, we always ask ourselves, what or wasn't successful about a project. So in this case, our product did turn into a Halloween costume. So we do feel like it was rather well received by the audience. Um, but in all seriousness, we were um, tasked with creating a tool that would support Steve and telling these stories, right? So election data should be theoretically easy to understand, right? But in the US, we've made that quite complicated. So we were tasked with providing him a tool that could help us help him to tell the main user journeys, which are primaries, midterms, and the general election. Then also handle like potential edge cases that might come up, right? So this tool was going to be, you know, utilized by one user, right, and then um, broadcast onto uh, news. So it's quite a unique and complex user experience that we had to think through. So in 2018, over 36 million people watched the midterm elections. Um, MSNBC's viewership was 4.7 million. And in 2020 for the general election, their viewership was 7.3 million. So we were brought in, and the original ask for us was to create a browser-based application um, for on, to use on air, right? 
So as the story goes, um, before the Data Viz Society had their jobs board, there was a Google Groups, um, Google Groups job, Data Viz jobs or something like that, right? Um, so I would, you know, every now and then scan that, see if there was anything interesting on there that I might want to reach out and see if we could get, you know, a cool project. So a former colleague of ours and part of the, you know, Data Viz community, EJ Fox, was working in-house at NBC at the time, and he had posted a job on the board saying, oh, um, looking for Data Viz developers, right? So I emailed him, and we had, we had worked with him previously. He had freelanced on another project of ours. So I emailed him and said, hey, um, you know, if you're interested in hiring a studio instead of individuals, let me know. We'd certainly be interested in working on this. So he's like, no, that's okay, thanks. We caught up, chit-chat, whatever. Um, but he's like, we really want to build out our team. Then two weeks later, he called me, and he was like, when can you guys start? So that was in April of 2018. Um, and we needed to design, implement, and extensively test this tool um, that was going to be viewed by millions and millions of people um, in from between April and November. So to say the pressure was on would be an understatement. So we started with user research interviews. Um, and those interviews were extremely essential to our ability to implement this product and make it a success. Um, so we started with interviewing, like, we interviewed people all over the organization, um, and we did a lot of user interviews. We interviewed everyone from the Artworks department, who they had done a ton of election static um, graphics, like years and years and years of experience, and they had so much knowledge to share with us. Um, we also interviewed a lot of people from the decision desk, which that team is the team that decides um, if a race is called. Um, and that was an incredibly interesting experience that we could talk about for days, so I won't, you know, elaborate on that. Um, and we talked to people that had been with the organization for 30 years, and we talked to people that had, that were in their 20s and new to the organization. The entire team was extremely passionate about elections and about telling this um, really critical and important story. Um, so if you can take yourself back to 2018, um, this midterm election was highly anticipated and definitely felt like it was carrying like the weight of the world on it at the time. That's how it felt for us. Um, so we were, we were really thrilled to be a part of this experience and we were very hopeful and excited and thinking that our data visualization user experience expertise could facilitate telling this story. Cool. So what's the story? What's the story we're trying to tell? And I'm being mindful that there are a lot of Europeans here and not as many Americans, but you know, the American election kind of uh, structure is extremely complex, right? So there are electors every two years, um, and in the elections, uh, the, all the members of Congress are going to be uh, uh, voted every four years, uh, every two years, sorry, uh, every four years, all the 100 senators are up for elections. Um, and uh, every four years they have a presidential election. So then before that, there are the primaries. The primaries are a mixture of uh, caucuses and open primaries and closed primaries. And the election for the president is actually really electing uh, this electoral colleague, which you guys have probably heard of. So it, there is a lot to tell and, and a lot of kind of noise that comes with it, right? So the, it comes back to what is the story, and the story is who is winning. Right, uh, like at, on election night, you have this anchor, and that's his story. But it's really, who do we think is winning, right? Because let's be clear, this is election that goes over different time zones. So by the time he goes on air, uh, multiple states haven't even reported yet, and then numbers are coming in. The number is the numbers that are that do come in are incomplete. Um, so it's really. Um, who do we think is winning, and, and why do we think so? So there are essentially four data points that can be visualized uh, on an election night. There is uh, exit polls, uh, the tabulated votes that are coming in. Both of these data points are coming from what is called the National Election Pool, which is an organization that the networks uh, formed after the budget um, 
Gore versus um, Bush election in 2000. So they have about 300 people on the grounds that are actually at state uh, capitals and at election centers. They're getting the data, putting it in the spreadsheets, sending it over, it gets into a database. It's all very fast, and that all goes to what is called the decision desk, which is a quarantined uh, organization within every network. They have no communication with other networks, so uh, to remove this kind of bias that NBC has called so-and-so for this and this, uh, so we have to call it too. So Decision Desk is isolated, does not know what else is going on. The third and almost most important storytelling part is votes outstanding, right? If you have like 20% of the votes in, it's really important to say like, well, okay, but we still think there are votes coming from here and there. And then of course, past election results. Um, so there were a few design strategies we had set out. Um, the first one was it had to be a flat design. And what I mean by that is that uh, broadcast graphics are usually flashy, right? Um, we, we've seen this, I think I see, saw something on BBC where they had this virtual studio and there were like 3D bar graphs and stuff and, and, and it's all very glittery. Um, MSNBC said, no, we want this very flat. We want this almost like a whiteboard. Um, it had to use implicit and explicit UI elements. So an implicit UI element is clicking on the state and then getting the election results. Um, explicit uh, is all the UI elements that we know, like a drop down, but they were to be visible for the viewer. So in other words, demystifying what's actually going on as a single user, which is Steve Konecki, is using. <clears throat> and the third one is the kiss rule. So keep it simple, uh, stupid but it's really keep it simple, Steve. So they doubled down on Steve Kornacki. He is one of us. He's a data guy, right? He wears cheap cockies, and he has the nervous energy of somebody who doesn't sleep and drinks too much Red Bull, and <laughs> we were just to here to support him. So there are four main parts to the app. Uh, there's the home screen, which you can see here. Um, which is sort of like where are we at this moment. Uh, then there is the choropleth map of the uh, tabulated motors, uh, a side panel, and a detailed drawer. So let's have a look at Steve using this and going from the home screen to uh, um, a result. This is actually before results are coming in. The Big Board, national political correspondent for NBC News and MSNBC and author of The Red and the Blue, Steve Kornacki joins us now. Steve? Yeah, let's take a look at Happy Election Day, by the way. Let's take a look here at some of those early contests and, and why they're going to be so important. So you say, let's start on Kentucky here at 6 o'clock. Let's take you inside that district a little bit. So this was the 2016 result in Kentucky 6th District. This was a so that's a good example of, of how he starts a story, right? He comes from the home screen, he's going into a district, and then he looks at the results. In this case, there were no results yet. And then he has these kind of historic drawers, and he can go back there in two years increments. So if he would keep on clicking, he would go back to 2014, 2012, and so forth. Right? The next thing we did was uh, implement what we called the leaderboard. Um, so there are... Um, 435 congressional districts, really only 40 of them are, are, are up, up for, you know, uh, are contested. So it, it was sort of like the, a way to condense out of this larger group of, of districts to a smaller one uh, and, and providing kind of shortcuts. Originally, this was supposed to be a heat map. We found out very, very early on that uh, gradients don't work on, on broadcast. It's really, it's red or it's blue. But let's, look, let's have a look at uh, Steve. And I think you guys were talking about this earlier. Let me show you one of the charts we put together here. Broadly speaking, these were all the Democratic targets, that most of the Democratic targets. You see kind of a patchwork here. But here's one particular kind of district that Democrats had their eyes on uh, last night. And still, these are districts that Republicans held but that Hillary Clinton won in the 2016 presidential election. And check this out. Look all the, at all the blue you see. 14 right now. 14 of the 25 Republican-held districts that Clinton had won. They've now said it's not just Trump we didn't like about the Republican Party. 
So that was also a good example of the explicit uh, UI, right? As you could see, the drop down was rather, you know, comically big. Uh, but the head of MSNBC always had this kind of uh, rule that he was like, if I'm in a bar and I see Steve Kornacki in a TV in the, at the corner of the bar and I can't hear him, I still want to understand what he's doing. Because essentially we're watching somebody using an app on TV, right? And so uh, UI elements that would change a state had to be kind of visible. Um, I'd love to talk a lot about this design. We don't have that much time, but I want to put a, um, point out one more design element that actually made it on air, which is about the votes outstanding. Talking about Fulton County, let's give you a sense here. 230,000 votes or so estimated, you know, left to be coming in here. And again, you see the margin Biden's running at, even with the same day vote, seems to be doing extremely well. And then how about this one? In next door, DeKalb County, yeah, 277,000 votes to come in. And again, this might even be a stronger area for Joe Biden. So, yeah, there are still, it's a half a million votes between those two places. You know, when you're looking at about, well, about a million left here statewide to come, we think yeah, there is still some room right there. Um, so, obviously, there's, there was a huge, huge team behind that. Right, so even uh, from us in the studio, there's James there's in the in the audience. There was Ellie and Alec, and I'm probably forgetting people. Um, at one point, uh, Shirley was involved in the project. Did this amazing uh, um, proof of concept for a, a demographic filter. We did all kinds of stuff, um, but I'll, I'll hand it over to to Natalie at this point. Yeah, um, yeah. So testing. Um, so as you can imagine, managing a product with like being a vendor for a large organization and managing a product build for a team that typically doesn't build products um, is, was quite a challenge. Um, so this particular case, we were the in-between between the digital team and the broadcast team. So the broadcast team operates in a completely way, different way than the digital team operates. The digital team is very much like agile, like, okay, let me know what you want changed and we'll make a ticket and you'll have it when this iteration is over. The broadcast team is like, we need that tomorrow for on air. It has to be ready to go and we're gonna need that tomorrow. Uh, so this is quite a different way of working. Um, so we kind of had to find like a middle ground in between that, right? Um, so we still loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so we came up with a lot of designs, a lot of concepts, a lot of visualizations that got nixed. Um, they just weren't necessarily, well, they, the team didn't think they were right for broadcast. Um, however, it was super fun to explore them um, and to come up with these other ways of telling these stories. Um, so for example, here's a line chart that didn't make it in. Um, this is a voter bar that didn't make it in. Um, also, we did all of our testing um, in the studio with the talent um, and it was just a really cool experience and it really did help us to determine you know, what is gonna work best on air. Um, so, yeah. Right, so the studio was sort of like the, the, the pivotal uh, point, right? Like, uh, essentially, again, we're building an app that somebody else, just one user is using and a million people are uh, seeing, right? So everything had to, be, had to be tested through that lens, right? So we had to do mock-ups, high-fidelity mock-ups, interactive mock-ups of all these views, bring it down into the studio, have Steve actually use it. Steve would be would, would get a mock hit, so they would, they would come up with a, with a scenario, the scenario would be tested on that, it would be filmed, and then you would see it on TV, right? So, um, and then the head of NBC watched it when he wanted and gave up or down, right? Um, colors were extremely difficult for us. You know, I mean, we do everything that we do is in the browser. You know, we have never done broadcast before, but uh, just imagine that when you have a color, you have a color that you have an app that runs in a studio setting which has completely other kind of ideas of, of lighting, then that is being filmed off and then broadcast on a TV. So that kind of level of, of color transitions was, was mind-blogging for us. And then luckily there are only two parties, right? It's the red and blue. But then you have the primaries, primaries where you have 15 people running and you have to kind of figure out, okay, how do I get 15 colors 
uh, that actually have a contrast that work well together and work well within the studio setting, filmed off, and then watched on TV back home. Even more difficult contrast, um, since the, the design kind of outset was to be very muted and, and kind of whiteboardy, uh, we at the beginning gravitated to a lot of grayscales. None of them worked, right? Like as you can see here, the map totally disappeared. We loved the idea of cartographs. We developed a lot of them, and we had them for congressional districts, for state levels, I mean, for all kinds of stuff. Steve loved them. Um, we, we ran a lot of kind of simulations uh, and ultimately, you know, it was another kind of thing that was killed, but, you know, we're going in baby steps. <coughs> um, I want to ask, I want to end the talk on, on a more serious note, and that is sort of like reminding us as in the database community of the power that we have in telling the stories we tell and being mindful that the visualizations we choose uh, are always subject for reinterpretation. And it's a bit of a dire uh, moment uh, in, in the US right now <clears throat> where you really have an election deny, uh, denialism. And to some degree, you know, we have to get a lot better in telling these stories to prevent some people to kind of twist the stories that we're telling and are being retold by them. And um, with that, Thank you so much for you. listening. Hello. Um, testing, there it goes. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, I really like the, the Keep It Simple Steve slide, just because like, when we're designing data visualizations, I think sort of like the knee-jerk reaction from product design normally is like dilute it, make this simpler, make this simpler. Um, but you had one user who is clearly a power user. So I'm wondering if you can talk about how that changed the design process. Like, were there affordances you had in the UI design? Could you like, like use sleight of hand or invisible areas? Things like, because you got like, the opportunity to learn this instrument. So right. I'm wondering how that uh, played out. Um, so we worked very closely with, with Steve and his producer, Adam. Uh, and we, we did kind of start with a blank slate. Right? And there were a lot of things that were uh, investigated. Uh, and I mentioned Shirley's work already. Like Steve was really into telling stories about demographics, uh, which is really where the story is. Um, but uh, I think there was just some sort of a consciousness on, on the top level, right? Uh, at this point at NBC, Andy Lack was, was the president, and, and he really had a different kind of storytelling idea in mind. And if you watch some election coverage from, from previous elections, it was really the anchor that was sitting on his desk, and he was like, and we're calling Florida for, you know, whatever, right? So, and now, now Steve Kornacki is here, and he's a totally different kind of storytelling, right? And I think it's... it's what we as a community see, right? Like it is really, the data is the story, right? Um, and Steve wanted all kinds of stuff, but um, we were all, and so did we, we were super excited yeah. about this, right? Uh, I mean, we, we, we wanted to do, you know, bubble diagrams and this and that, and you know, and believe me, we did a lot of that, um, but really almost like a subset of that uh, went on. But also, what do we know about, you know, broadcast storytelling, very, very little. You know, like it's a different kind of way of telling a story. Did okay. Okay. Yeah, we have one online from Ben uh, Brenner. Uh, what went into your decision making about what underlying technologies to use? Oh, the, they had already the in-house team had selected what technology to use. It was built in view. And this was actually kind of amazing, right? Because at that point, uh, you know, browser-based stuff got so fast and so reliable that you could actually build it in a browser and then run it Chromeless, you know. But before broadcast kind of tools were all proprietary you know, software, and and this opened up a whole other kind of way to think about this, right? You know, I mean, JavaScript is yeah. amazing. We had another one over there before. Uh, what well, maybe? Uh, hello, uh, my name is Salome. I'm a data journalist, so this is fascinating to me, and I have two questions, but it's short. Um, the first one is, um, newsrooms are known for working really quickly, 
Uh, and I wanted to ask how much time from beginning to end did this project um, take? And the other one is that if after the elections, uh, if the panel was used again, and if so, if there were any changes that you felt that it was needed to uh, implement. Thank I can you so much. First one, just um, yeah, so we started in 20, working with them in April of 2018, um, and from basically from scratch. And it was on air for the midterms in November of 2018. So it was quite a fast turnaround, which made it exciting and also very, very stressful. Um, and then we continued working with them um, up until the 2020 election. Um, so yeah, and then do you want to answer the um, second question? No, I think you, you answered it. Um, well, you asked like, were there anything Things oh, that we would change, oh, a ton. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was kind of a humbling experience, honestly. You know, I mean, usually we build something and then it's used by, you know, some kind of user group or you just put it out in the world. You don't see people using it. You actually kind of don't want, like somebody has mentioned, it's just show, show your work to five people and watch them using it. Now you, you see somebody is watching it all the time, right? And it's just one user, right? Uh, and he made so many mistakes. He would, like, click wrong and, you know, it was like... It was kind of painful watching it sometimes. Um, and then, of course, you're like, you know, you just never, as a designer, you just never stop designing. And we're like, oh, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Um, but yeah, uh, luckily, it's, you know, now it's a, a web app, you know, you can easily uh, uh, kind of iterate on it and make changes. And I think that was also the main driver from a business side to have something that is, you know, much more faster to react to. Uh, we had another one there. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be the last question, sorry. You can ask yeah, more but, questions uh, during find cocktail. Us, find us, yeah. we, 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 we can talk we, about this for hours. Days. Thank you. Days. Uh, uh, th this was fascinating. So my question is that the election and bringing visualization to, to the public, and particularly because you had an opportunity to see an audience that most of us would only dream of with the studio. Do you feel like this, as well as bringing visualization to the masses with COVID, is making waves in the way that advancing the general public understanding of charts, visualization. So for instance, when you brought in the map, which is a different way of looking at the data, do you feel like we are advancing or maybe just a little bit? Um, I, I do think so. I, I think we are as a, the audience is learning and, and you know, like the, those baby steps, you know, like you go and then and you try things out. But it is amazing to me. I mean, just look at COVID, right? Like all of a sudden everybody was talking about, uh, you know, flattening the curve, right? Like something that you had as a term out, outside of, of math had never ever, ever heard, right? And we became so attuned to, to look at data, right? Uh, I mean, just we all were glued to like, you know, the trend lines of, of COVID deaths and, and hospitalization rates and whatnot, right? Um, and, and even on TV now, it makes for compelling TV. I mean, let's be clear, before that really, the weather broadcast was the only database on TV, right? And we became all like, nobody's really thinking about this, right? But we're totally able all to read kind of weather patterns on a map because we've been watching that forever, right? Um, and I think election coverage, as it becomes more serious and more kind of uh, academic, will also help to, again, sort of like take these, some of these arguments out because people will then understand how to read a choropleth map. Right, and be like, well, that, you know. So, so there, there is a step-by-step -step education, I think, for us as viewers and listeners and, and, um, that, that I think the networks have a part of. We did have this person over there who, that was going to be the last question, so <laughs> this is going to be the last question now. Uh, this uh, lady over here, no, second. Yeah, in the front. In the front. Hi, Shireen. Hi, Shireen. Um, I have a question less with the data vis, but more with managing what I imagine was a very difficult client with a highly technical background, like you were speaking about colors not working, all of that, in a very short timeline. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's the question? What? Um, it was if hard, you could speak yeah. to the challenges of, oh. of <laughs> the, the imbalance it creates also in the client relationship that you're n not um, the technical experts in everything that you're working on yeah. in that situation. Well, just speaking, so yes, it was challenging. Um, 
but in the best way possible. Um, and we always say with all of our clients, like when we meet the cast of characters, so we always try to figure out the dynamics of the in-house team and how that works and who's making the decisions and you know, who's speaking up in the meetings and why they're saying that or if this person doesn't talk that much but when they say something that carries a lot of weight and value. Um, just like honing those interactions and those relationships and understanding where the clients are coming from and why they're coming from there. So I think one of the themes that we've seen like today is um, at the conference is really pushing our clients and pushing like the general audiences that we are, um, you know, we're kind of teaching them, right, and pulling them along, right? So pushing that envelope just a little bit, right, so that something, they see something new or something innovative, right? And audiences can be trained, you know, to, to view, like Herman was just saying, right? Um, yeah, so I don't know. There were, there were a lot of challenges with this project, but I felt like the end result was very successful and the application has been used in every election since then. Um, and so I, I feel like it was a, you know, amazing opportunity to be a part of, so. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.